is he going to end the war in Ukraine, which doesn't seem to be helping anybody? I think so. I think, I think he understands that you cannot have this war continue. And I think he will sit down with all sides. And he's got, I mean, I'm, he's, I'm not giving you, saying anything out of school, but he's going to make them all understand it's in the world's best interest and their best interest to put this war behind. And he's, there's some tools that he can use to make each side come to the table and seriously just negotiate. Um, but he will personally inject himself into it. He won't give it to a you know, third-party person to do it. He will make this, on the front end, his responsibility. And I think he believes that, without getting way too complicated, you know, all the parties at the table, the Europeans, the, the Russians, the Ukrainians, um, all have have reason to want this thing to end. And there's pieces that can... Forget the public rhetoric and the public positions. There are, there are things that can happen that all sides can accept if they know that it's going to be pushed on them by somebody who will enforce it. Biden's not that person. Blinken doesn't scare a person when he sits down. In fact, they would surprise he sits at the table as opposed to in a chair behind the table. Uh, he's just not a leader. Um and uh, and so that presence of of the president hovering over everything, injecting himself into it, plus his relationships with all of those people. I mean, you know, even Zelensky uh, was there when Trump was the president the first time. Uh, will have a lot more impact. Right now, there's nobody running the Ukraine peace process. Nobody. Uh, the Europeans don't have the the. <clears throat> vision or the will to take a, 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 a position against Putin that will force uh, Putin to give in to Ukraine. And they don't have a strong enough position against Putin that will force Ukraine to give in to you. To... But I mean, Europe, if you look at Europe, just go to Europe um, over the last almost three years now, since this war started in February of 2022, Europe has declined in every sense. I mean, it's just a poorer, more chaotic place than it was three years ago. I mean, this is crushing Europe. So I don't understand why there's no European leader who can, particularly in Germany, but not just, and take control and bring this to an end because it's killing their continent. Who's a European leader that has stature? Not fair. I mean... <laughs> And so they're all just enmeshed in their own self-survival inside their countries. I mean, Merkel had a sort of more European-oriented reputation, but Germany's not the one to lead Europe <laughs> in a no, way it's that's a disaster. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and there's and there's nobody else. There's no Thatcher. I mean, there, there is no. There's no even Berlusconi uh, who could have you know pressed certain things. Uh, you know, Schulz is probably on his way out. Uh, in Germany, Macon is on his way out. Um, you know the Spanish are. You know they. You don't even know who's in office these days. Right. Uh, you know the Italians. Maloney is emerging. She's she's becoming one of the more forceful leaders in, uh, in Europe, but she's doing it gradually. She has not emerged as a pan-European. <laughs> no, leader. she certainly hasn't. Uh, but but she's getting. But she is emerging because she's been willing to do certain things, uh, and then the Eastern Europeans are frozen out by the Western Europeans where you have some of the stronger leaders. Um, so there is nobody to solve the problem. The, even though it's the European Union, it's really the European disunion because all the countries have their own interest and they they always put their, they use the bureaucracy of the EU to enhance their interest to, to the diminishment of the other members of the European Union uh, at times. But so none of them have the stature to lead a united front against Putin or against Zelensky, depending on what your position is. Do, do you think that they sense that their continent is dying? No, because they've created this world, and so they think it's the right world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's you go to Davos and you sit around and you realize these got people live in a bubble. Yeah, they have no idea. No, they have no idea. And but but the bubble that is the bubble they created. 
And uh, and so, it, like you see on the with the left here in the United States, they think you know transgender is the future. They think that uh, women men should be able to participate in sp- in female sports if they're transgender. Well, same thing in Europe with with globalism. They think this is the right way, and if just everybody will do what we say, what we say, then they'll be better off. And it is that that. Davos mentality. Yeah. Well, they're a joke to the rest of the world. And I guess they're the, always the last ones to know that they are. Um, so you think Trump, can, what what would peace terms look like in Ukraine? And I should say, for those who don't know, you spent, I don't know, at least 10 years. How, how long did you spend working? About 10, in, years, 10 years. 10 years working in Ukraine. One of, the most, one of the most powerful outside political figures in Ukraine, in Ukraine deeply knowledgeable about it. You had an office there. Um, not on the pro-Russia side, I should say. Uh, but what, Given your knowledge of that country and region, what would a settlement, realistic settlement, look like? Well, I mean, I, I think they will. A lot of the pieces may not necessarily be a part of Ukraine. It's other things that Russia might feel is important to them in Russia or in dealing with certain other parts of the world, uh, or or some of their technology needs or things like that. There are pieces to a game that that will interest Putin that it can facilitate getting to Russia sooner than later in a peace process negotiation. Um, do the borders I, of Ukraine change, do you think? Well, depends on how you look at Crimea. Ukraine still accepts, says Crimea belongs to R- Ukraine. Russia says, no, Ukra- Crimea is now part of Russia. Um, I think Crimea probably stays where they currently are positioned right now. For sure. I don't see that happening. Right. But Zelensky and the Ukrainians say, we got to have Ukraine back. But that's the, Crimea, but that's, that's just silly. I mean, they're not going to give up the naval base, right? I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, you know, Putin thinks one of the biggest mistakes in the history of the Soviet Union was when Khrushchev, who was from Ukraine, in, in, in a moment of, uh, of enthusiasm, gave Ukraine independence from Russia. Uh, you know, the independence in the Soviet Union was not really independence, right. but it gave them the ability to be considered a country on their own, not a vassal state of the Soviet Union. Putin never accepted that. Um, and so when he became into power, one of the first things he wanted to do <clears throat> was get Ukraine back into Russia, where he th- thought it belonged. As you know, Kiev was the first capital of yes. of Russia. Uh, and uh, and, to, and Crimea, which had an important uh, military component for for Russia, where they had their their bases and where it was an access to the Black Sea. Um, you know that was, and it was a very Russian uh, 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 enclave, as opposed to Ukrainian. Um, you know that was the first place he struck. When 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 he had the, saw the opportunity under Obama, I had uh, and so I think that will be. I will be surprised if anything changes on Crimea. That's too much of a swallow, without Russia losing the war. Yeah, and uh, do you see that I, happening? No, I don't. I don't see them winning the war, but I don't see them losing the war. Um, I think that. Yeah, there's there are economic issues of of rehabilitation of the country, reconstruction because Eastern Ukraine is destroyed, uh, both the industry and the and the whole infrastructure. Um, I I think Eastern Ukraine will be in some capacity still part of Ukraine, whether they have autonomous zones, at, but as a part of Ukraine versus autonomous zones. As autonomous, truly autonomous, you know, that'll be part of the negotiation. Um, Zelensky can't give up West Eastern Ukraine, but Zelensky and the the center of the Ukrainian universe is Kiev and West, not east of Kiev. Um, and so the destruction allows for some creativity. The destruction of the East will allow some creativity on on the resolution of how we define the geostructuring of it. I don't think I don't think they give it up, but <clears throat> there may be some kind of concessions that can be made that will save face for Putin, save territory for Ukraine, uh, and get money into reconstructing uh, uh, that part of the world. Um, 
but there's a, there's a way, there's a play there. There is a way to, to get a ceasefire and to get the people talking. And everybody wants that. Just nobody has the leadership to do it. Trump is the leader who can do it. Um, and there's the, there's the NATO factor too, which will be relevant to Putin. Uh, and uh, some kind of commitment that Ukraine, even as part of the European trade union or trade association, would never be, wouldn't be part of NATO. I think that's something that's on the table. So, for the years that you worked in Ukraine, was Ukraine joining NATO something that most Ukrainians wanted or that Europe wanted? N- no, Ukraine, NATO is a political issue. Joining the European Union is an economic issue. Right. And what the Ukrainians cared about was the economic issue. Um, yes, they, they, they wanted their independence, but there wasn't, they weren't fearful of Russia invading before uh, at that point. Uh, and the Russians didn't want NATO on the border of Ukraine. Well, yeah. And, uh, so why did the Biden administration, so if the Ukrainians weren't begging to be in NATO and NATO didn't want Ukraine in NATO, which I think is all true, correct me if I'm wrong. You're correct. Then why was the Biden administration, Kamala Harris specifically, calling in public for Ukraine to join NATO? Like, What would be the point of that? Because they're idiots. Yeah. I mean, I can't justify a policy that the Europeans didn't want, the Ukrainians didn't want, and the Russians didn't want, and the U.S. was for Okay, so then maybe if Putin says and says out loud and certainly suggests it again and again, if Ukraine joins NATO, I will move militarily against Ukraine. Everyone knew that. Even I knew that living a long way from Ukraine. And the Biden administration says, no, we want Ukraine and NATO and says that to Zelensky in public in early February 2022. Maybe they wanted Russia to invade Ukraine. Or maybe they're just stupid (laughs) (laughs) because there was no, I mean, that was the red line. Yeah. And and there was, and nobody wanted it except for Biden, you know, this macho approach to things and, and, and a truly a lack of understanding. It's not like I'm telling you anything that was a secret. This was all publicly known. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 and universally known in Ukraine, right? Right. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.